Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashim Ali Khan. So now I am going to start the next problem on Z test. So far seven problems I have completed. Now in this video I am going to continue the eighth and ninth problem. So before starting the next problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So before starting the eighth one, take a screenshot of the solution of eighth and ninth, then I'll explain all the points. Come on, see the eighth one. <clears throat> a stenographer claims that she can type at the rate of 120 words per minute. A stenographer typist, she is claiming that she can type 120 words per minute. So can we reject her claim on the basis of 100 trials in which she demonstrate a mean of 116 words, 116, with a standard deviation of 50 words. See here, the stenographer is claiming that she can type 120 words per minute. In order to check whether she is right or not, we are taking trials, samples. So totally 100 samples we have taken. In those 100 samples, the mean number of words are 116. So apparently it looks like that she is, her claim is wrong. Because she is claiming 120 words, but in the samples she is typing only 116 words with a standard deviation of 15 words. So this is a problem of mean and standard deviation, not of proportions, what we have seen in the last video. So sample mean, sample standard deviation and population mean is given. This type of problems already we have done in the earlier videos. So we are given mu. Mu is the population mean. That is 120 words per minute and n sample size 100 trials are taken x bar sample mean is 116 words per minute S small s standard deviation that is 15 words this is the complete information given we want to check whether the population mean is same as sample mean, sample mean or her claim is wrong that's what we are finding null hypothesis ho mu is equal to 120 always null means no difference that means the population mean and sample mean both are same whatever she is claiming that is correct that is true the average number of words she can type per minute is 120 no difference so there is no significant difference between population mean and sample mean alternative hypothesis h1 mu is less than 120 words because she is typing only 116 the average of sample is 116 only that means her claim is not correct 120 is uh, 116 is less than 120 so mu is less than 120 it is left tail test we are taking a left tail test because less than the claim of the stenographer is incorrect she can type less than 120 words per minute. So the alternative hypothesis should be exactly opposite to null hypothesis. When we have seen, when we have said the null hypothesis mu is equal to 120, alternative is less than 120 because here it is given 116, right? Now level of significance alpha is equal to 0 0.05. If nothing is given, we take the alpha 0 0.05 assumed. Now test a statistic. We are comparing the population mean with the sample mean. So formula is x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root n. Starting first to second problem we have applied this formula. So x bar minus mu divided by sigma by root n. Sigma means population standard division. But in our problem population standard division is not given. Sample standard division is given. So you should write one sentence. For large sample, we can substitute S in place of sigma. So in place of sigma, we can write small s. Now x bar. x bar is 116. Mu is 120. 116 minus 120. Divide by small s is 15. Divide by root n. n is 100. Sample size 100. 
तो हंड्रेड अंडर रूट इज नथिंग बट टू टेन रूट हंड्रेड इज नथिंग बट टेन सो वन सिक्सटीन माइनस वन ट्वेंटी इज माइनस फोर एंड फिफ्टीन डिवाइड बाई टेन इज वन पॉइंट फाइव सो यू आर गेटिंग जेड इज इक्वल टू माइनस टू पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन दिस इज द कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ जेड एंड दिस शुड बी कंपेयर विद द क्रिटिकल वैल्यू The table value of Z at five percent level for left tail test is minus one point six five. I'm not elaborating how you got this by minus one point six five. You have to watch the earlier videos. The previous videos I have explained you in detail how to find the critical value of Z by drawing a normal curve. Again and again, if I draw that, the time will be wasted. That's why if you are not perfect. Watch the first second video on problems. On problems, first video on problems of Z test. You watch. I have explained you how we got minus one point six five. This is the critical value. So the critical region lies for Z less than or equal to minus one point six five. Left tail test. It is left tail test. That's why minus. Now we compare. This is the computed value of Z. This is the critical value of Z. it is very clear the computed value of z is less than the critical value minus 2.67 is less than minus 1.65 so it falls in rejection region the null hypothesis is rejected the stenographer claiming that 120 words per minute is rejected an alternative hypothesis is accepted what is alternative her typing speed is less than 120 it is not 120 less than 120 that is accepted so here the computed value of z minus 2.67 is less than the critical value of z minus 1.65 so it falls in rejection region null hypothesis is rejected the claim of the stenographer is not correct she can type less than 120 words per minute that is a conclusion that's it so this is the eighth problem Now see the ninth one. In a random sample of one thousand persons from town A, four hundred are found to be consumers of wheat. So we have selected one thousand persons sample size in town A, and out of one thousand persons, four hundred are the consumers of wheat. In a sample of eight hundred from town B, four hundred are consumers of wheat or consumers of wheat. is there any significant difference between town a and town b in consumption of wheat see in this problem we are not given any mean or standard deviation we are given the proportion what proportion two samples are there town a town b we want to find out whether consumers of wheat are same in both the towns proportion of consumer of wheat proportion of consumer of wheat are same in both the towns or not that's what we have to find out so we have selected 1000 consumers 1000 people in town a out of 1000 people we found 400 are consumers of wheat out of 1400 in town b we have selected a sample of 800 consumers in 800 consumer 400 are consumers of wheat now we got the proportion of a town and proportion of b town now we found out the difference it is called comparing the proportions of two samples the problem is comparing the proportions of two samples now here comparing two sample proportions n1 is the sample size of first sample 1000 n2 is the sample size of second sample 1000 people we have selected in first a town and 800 people we have selected in peter out of 1000 400 are consumers of wheat the proportion p1 400 divided by 1000 is 0.4 the 0.4 is the proportion of wheat consumers in a town similarly b town p2 out of 800 400 are consumers of wheat to 400 by 800 0.5 now 0.4 is the proportion of consumer of wheat in a town 0.5 is the proportion of consumer of wheat in town b now p bar 
average consumer of wheat, average consumers of wheat in both the towns, town A and town B. We want the average P bar is equal to N1 P1 plus N2 P2 divided by N1 plus N2. So we want to find out what is the average proportion in both the towns. So N1 P1, N1 is how much? 1000. P1 0.4. So 1000 into 0.4 plus N2 800, P2 0.5. 800 into 0.5 divided by N1 plus N2, 1000 plus 800. So 1000 into 0.4 is 400, 800 into 0.5 is 400, so 400 plus 400 800, divided by 1800, you will get 0 0.44. So 0 0.44 is the average consumer in both the towns, town A and town B combined, combined together. So 0 0.44 is P bar, so Q bar, Q bar is 1 minus P bar, 1 minus 0.44 is 0.56. So we have calculated P bar and Q bar. Remember the formula. N1 P1 plus N2 P2 divided by N1 plus N2. We got P bar. And 1 minus P bar is the Q bar. Now null hypothesis. Null hypothesis P1 is equal to P2. P1, capital P1, is the proportion of wheat consumers in town A. And P2 is the proportion of wheat consumers in town B. The total proportion, the total proportion of wheat consumer in town A is equal to the proportion of wheat consumer in town B. Both are equal. No significant difference in wheat consumer in the two cities or two towns A and B. Null hypo, no difference. Alternative hypothesis not equal to. We will not write less than or greater than because we are comparing, it is asking you both are same or not, right? They are not claiming, simply it is finding out whether same or not. That's why alternative hypothesis is P1 not equal to P2, two-tailed test, two-tailed test. There is significant difference in the proportion of wheat consumer in both the cities. There is significant difference between the wheat consumer in both the cities, A and B. Now level of significance 0 0.05 assumed, not given in the problem. Test statistic. Since the sample is a large sample, because 1000 consumers in A town and 800 we have taken in B town, for large consumers under HO, the test statistic is new form. This is the first time we are applying the form. Z is equal to P1 minus P2. P1 stands for proportion of wheat consumer in A town. P2 stands for proportion of wheat consumer in B town. Already we have calculated here. P1 is 0 0.4, P2 is 0 0.5. So P1 minus P2 divided by P bar into Q bar. P bar we have calculated 0.44 and Q bar we have calculated 0.56. So P bar into Q bar 0.44 into 0.56 into 1 divided by N1. N1 is 1000. 1 divided by N2, 1 by 800. Now we simplify 0.4 minus 0.5 is minus 0.1 divided by 0.44 into 0.56 is 0.2464. 1 divided by 1000, 0 0.001 plus 1 divided by 800, 0 0.00125. Now first of all, numerator as it is, minus 0.1 divided by 0 0.2464. You add up these two values, you will get 0 0.00225. Now you multiply these two terms, you will get 0 0.00555 under root. So after root, you are getting 0 0.0235. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.0235 you will get minus 0.426. Minus 0.426 is the computed value of Z. Now this computed value of Z should be compared with the critical value, table value. So what is the table value? The table value of Z at 5% level for a two-tailed test is plus or minus 1.96. Remember this. In examination, there is no need to explain how we got Simply you write on at 5% level for a two-tailed test, the critical value of Z is plus or minus 1.96. For your information, if you want how to find out this one, go to my first video on, on this uh, Z test. Z test video number one, problems video number one, part one. In that part one, I have explained you how we have taken this plus or minus 1.96. 
first video and second video first part and second part i will explain you in detail regarding this how we got plus or minus so, so the critical region lies for z less than or equal to minus 1.96 and z greater than or equal to plus 1.96 two tail test that's why the rejection region will lie on left side as well as right side but our computed value is minus minus 4.26 so we compare this with minus 1.96 we compare this with minus 1.96 not plus now minus 4.26 is less than minus 1.96 so computed value of z is less than the critical value so it falls in rejection region so the computed value of z minus 4.26 is less than the critical value of z minus 1.96 so it falls in rejection region ho is rejected null hypothesis rejected there is significant difference between the wheat consumer of the two cities a and b Finally, there is significant difference. Null hypothesis is rejected. What is the null hypothesis? P1 is equal to P2. This is rejected. Alternative is accepted. P1 not equal to P2. There is significant difference in the wheat consumer in the two towns A and B.